What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 107 MMA podcast. I'm DS, and I'm here with the squeeziest of them all, Dino Bam Bam. I like that. Dino Bam Squeezy, for y'all that don't know. Right. Yeah. But, uh, uh, that's why I had to let him know. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you did. Uh, really quickly, last week, we did pretty damn well on that card. Yes. Not you, to toot you, our own you, horns. You in particular. Me in particular, but you did great as well. I did do great. Um, I think this is probably a good time to let these folks know yep. that they should follow us on Instagram. And while you're here on YouTube, since you're watching this video, right down there, like right here somewhere, there's a little button that says subscribe. Click that. There's a little bell next to it. Click that as well. That would really help us out. Please. Yeah. Help. You said to follow us on Instagram. On Instagram, it's D107MMA, yep. exactly as it is on YouTube. We would really appreciate it. Like a little gentleman's handshake kind of thing. Like... We do this for you guys. Yeah. Help us out too, you know? It costs you nothing. It costs you nothing. It doesn't even cost you time. You could have done it by now. Right. And the time that we've been yapping away yeah. could have been done. Why is this pencil here? I don't... You put that there. I did do that. <laughs> it shouldn't be there. Um, anyway, <laughs> so obviously today we've got a big, pretty big fight night UFC card. And yeah. we've really been spoiled over the last few weeks, I would say. Yes, sir. Um, last week's fight card was crazy, as you mentioned already. But man, that main event and that co-main, yeah. nuts. Um, I did lose a shit ton of money on <laughs> my parlay on the co-main. Yeah. I should have known. Dude, Justin Gaethje just does damage with every punch that he throws. Yeah. It's nuts. Dude. The, Jabs and... to crosses to hooks to uppercuts. He's doing damage. It, uh, that's the first thing that Fiziev, Fiziev said to him at the end of the yeah. fight, if you remember. Yeah, it's everything to He's damage. like, bro, everything, like, exactly that. Like. And and here's what another crazy thing. I just have to say this. I ended up backing out of my early pick on that on the card. Yeah. So I did like a whole card parlay that got screwed up by one piece. I remember. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, we by talking. one piece. So I flopped on two of my picks pre, sh or post show, I should say. Yeah. And none other than the post one girl. Post recording. Yeah, saying, post yeah. us recording, and the one that we like kind of like argued about, where I was like Casey O'Neill, and you're like, no, Maya's gonna win. And I, I was I, like, you're going to be wrong, and we bet 50 bucks on it, oh, so I owe you 50 bucks. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, and... Uh, See, but I was very... Ad you, I'm, like, I'm not that adamant about a lot of women's yeah. fights. I was very adamant about that one. But here's what sucks about it. Not only am I wrong, not only do I lose the 50 bucks, which is like, what I lost out on six Gs on a five-buck parlay. Six Gs. So Casey O'Neill joins my Mike Perry club, which yeah. is the one to ruin a full-card parlay for me. So Maya joins the... Uh, D Rod Club for me, which is people yeah. I hate for costing me a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. She was so. good, man. She looked good. Um. Anyway, yeah. aside from that, by the way, how did you like doing the? Um, Hated it. Doing the what's Hate. called by, by yourself the the, the little MMA intro. guides. Is that what, did, you, did you know the what I was talking about? Casual thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. The like, casual MMA guide. I prefer to, ha you know, that sounds. It's gonna sound really weird, but I was gonna say I prefer to do it with you. Pause. Thanks, man. Not on some Jeff I, I was hoping that you would feel that way yeah. after doing it by yourself. <laughs> yeah. You did a great job. Thank though. you. It was like only a four-minute video. If not, you guys, if you guys haven't seen it, go watch it. Yeah. Um, Check out our, other, our short end, our short form videos. It is hot as shit in here, isn't it? It is really hot yeah. in here, dude. Can, we, you, can you do something about that? Yeah, or? I should check that out. <laughs> yeah, please. But follow our short form videos in the meantime. I'm glad you said something, to be honest. It's not. It's at 70. Yeah. That's messed up, dude. I don't know. I'm always hot in here. For for what it's worth, it's some insider info, I'm always burning up as we're doing All these. All the time. So, anyway, follow our short form videos, especially if you're not, like, if you don't consider yourself, like, the biggest fan of the sport at this point. It's a newer sport. We want more people to watch it. That's one of our goals, right? So, check those out. Much shorter videos, but really good insights into, like, the main yeah. points of each fight card coming up. Yeah, I, I think it's a good series for, like you said, fans that are just trying to get into it, and we're trying to help, guys. Yeah, yeah. always. For sure. Um, because we do, we understand that our typical breakdowns like this one are very long because we watch, again, like, 20 hours of film a week, and mm -hmm. I'm not joking. So, um, anyway, let's get into it. Pretty big fight card. Obviously, we know about the main event. But let's start with the first fight of the card. It's Haley Cowan versus Tamiris Vidal. Yeah. I'll let you take this one. Sure. Uh, really quickly, before we do start that, yeah. quick disclaimer, I absolutely hate this card for betting. Yeah. Oh, I me know, too, me too. And I sure. know we've said that like yeah. a couple of times. We no, even said it last week and we're, did we're well. We're honest about... Right. This is not the one, though. Yeah. Like, do not... There's March Madness. Well, just real yeah. quick, the reason that you were going to win so much money and the reason why me on... I think my parlay was four fights. Okay. And all guessing the way that it ended. Yeah. 
and it was like what thirty to win a thousand dollars. Yeah. So, but anyway, I think that it was a tough card to bet. We yeah. just did really well. Well, so just for the record, it's I'm not, proud. I'm proud of us. Yeah, yeah. But I think this week is terrible, like terrible, terrible for betting. I agree. I yeah. think we're. I think we're gonna do horrible on this card. I hope not, but I'm, I think I'm well, pessimistic. I, we haven't discussed it at all. I'm, yeah. I'm very curious to see what we disagree on today. Sure. Yeah. So, like I said, there is March Madness this weekend. There's the Caleb Plant Benavidez fight. There's Ooh, other I'm things. I'm excited for that. Yeah. There's other things to gamble on if you need yeah. a, if you need sports gambling. Yeah. Anyways, though. Haley Cowan, Tamaris Vidal. Haley Cowan was supposed to fight two, three weeks ago yep. against your girl Leach. Or no, she <laughs> fought Leach, right? In the contender she series. Did, she did. She yeah, did. that was that was the joke. Anyways, Tamaris Vidal, 1-0 in the UFC. She's a jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai fighter. She had a first round knockout over Ramona Pascal, who is absolutely humongous. Yeah. She's huge for the weight division. I don't know how she makes it's a big lady. Yeah. Anyways, she had a knockout versus her. She threw like a switch knee. Also, uh, she's Chinese. She's from Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah. Just like you hear Ramona Pascal and you're like... That's Italian or yeah, like... Or like yeah. Venezuelan or something. Anyway, so she threw like a switch knee to her liver, which was dope. Uh, not too much to be seen in that fight. It ended kind of quickly. Um, anyways, her previous fight, she was in the LFA. She has a couple heel... Or she had a heel hook win there, a couple subs. She's all right. Like, she's not all that to me. I didn't no, think so either. I had a hard time yeah. getting a read on her, honestly. Same. And, and I don't think very highly of Kay- Haley Cowan either. No, I mean, and again, that's no disrespect. She's 31 years old. She's new to the sport. She's a former D1 gymnast. So she does have like she's that. She's strong as hell. Yeah, man. she does have like that core strength, that she's gymnast power. Hell, yeah. I agree. Um, maybe she lost her contender series fight. That was something I was thinking when I was watching that fight. Like it was a very close decision. Anyways, I'm going to start this card off picking the underdog here. Haley Cowan seems tougher. She seems weirdly more technical than a Muay Thai fighter. Yeah. Like a person with a Muay Thai background. She's good enough on the ground if it gets there to survive any sub attempts that may come her way from Vidal. 29-28 Haley Cowan to start the card. Yep. Yeah, that was my original thought too, honestly. Um, Haley Cowan, I think she she's a she's a two-time All-American tumbler gymnast. Right. Which is like, but gymnasts are strong, man. Yep. So, you know, that's like, and I feel like she's more aggressive than Vidal. Yeah. So, I don't know, like, on tape, Vidal doesn't pop out at all to me. Haley Cowan does pop to me more on tape, though logically, like, the matchup is a poor matchup for somebody like Haley Cowan. And it's not, like, for example, if you have a high-level striker versus high-level jiu-jitsu guy, chances are the high-level striker has some acceptable jiu-jitsu to the point where they can nullify it to some extent, right? And yeah. be able to exert their game plan. I feel like somebody like Haley Cowan, like, I don't know, is the skill there to be able to balance that out? This is a tough one, man. I would come over here this tough. from a betting perspective, but uh, I guess I'm gonna agree with you. And for what it's worth, I, Haley Cowan. This is the Cowan, third time I flipped, by the way, in my mind. <laughs> on this fight. Yeah, yeah. And for what it's worth, Haley Cowan, the plus one ninety underdog. I think that's at what it moment. is for me. Yeah. That's what it is for me. The fact that she's a two to one underdog, I don't think it should be like that. Yeah. So I mean, I'll take the plus money. Let's get it. Don't bet this though, for the love of God. Unless you know something. I don't do. bet this card. Don't bet this card. Um, moving up, it's the second fight of the card. It's Venetia Salvador versus Victor Altamirano. Mm-hmm. And this is an interesting fight. Um, it's the little guys, right? They're yeah. at what? One, 125. 125, yep. Um, yeah, Salvador comes from the Contender Series. He throws absolute bombs. Yeah. He's not the most technical fighter, but he has 11 KOs at flyweight, which is wild. For the 125 pound division, I know we've seen that a little bit more in the in the mo- last couple of years. Let's Absolutely. say, um, versus Shannon Ross, he dropped them badly in the first round, almost a KO. Um, he did show a good chin in that too. That was a crazy fight. Um, he eventually dropped them. Obviously, Shannon Ross also got a contract. I don't know why he got a contract after that. I think I I think we talked about this around the Australia card. Yeah, that's when he was signed. I think he like went and got a win somewhere. I'm not sure though. Yeah, and but, then he like took a short note, short notice fight, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Victor Altamirano, definitely the better grappler in my opinion. Versus the, what do you think? Grappler? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Versus De Silva, he was dropped early with a right hand, and then he eventually dropped him with a big body shot, and then showed some really nice ground and pound. Mm-hmm. I don't feel great about picking either of these guys. To be quite honest, it was very hard for me again. Two fights in a row. Yeah. Um. That's how I felt this whole I just part. think that Altamirano is a little too hittable. Yeah. And I think that 
we know what Vinicius Salvador is going to do. He's going to come in. He's going to start swinging bombs. And I do think he catches them. Now, Victor Altamirano, he's shown that he can take some damage, too. Um, yeah, I'm just going to, I guess I'm going to go with Salvador. I mean, I just think he will eventually catch him. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, again, basically a coin flip on the odds here. It's 115. My, it's minus 115 for Salvador, minus a 105 for Altamirano. So basically a coin flip. I think Vinicius Salvador is the better of the two on the feet, as you mentioned. You? Yeah, okay. I think on the feet, I think he is a little better than Altamirano. He's got like that weird capoeira kind of like Michelle Pereira, diet Michelle Pereira style. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, on the ground, we don't know. Like, yes, I assume Altamirano is the better of the two. Yeah. But we haven't seen much at all of yeah. Salvador on the ground. So, um, by the way, somebody on this card beat Michelle Pereira. I, I don't remember. Like years who. ago. And I, I now I'm going to be tripping off who it was. But... You're, you're going to see it at some point, right? Yeah. It's one of those. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to trust, um, sorry, Vinicius Salvador I here. Apologize. I think he edges it out 29-28. Should be a good fight. As you mentioned, I hate picking this, and yeah. I'm not comfortable with it. Uh, Just both, full both, disclosure. Both, both fights so Yeah, full disclosure. Sure. Um, moving up to the third fight on the card, it's Manuel Torres versus... Trey Ogden. This fight's taking place at lightweight 155. Yeah. What do you think about this one? Manuel Torres, Trey Ogden. All right. So Trey Ogden's one and one in the UFC. Lost his debut to my boy Jordan Levitt. Uh, bounced back with a win versus Daniel Zellhuber later on, who uh, was like a big prospect or yeah. highly touted prospect. And where is Zellhuber from? I remember I was tripping off. He's that. Mexican. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Zellhuber. Yeah. Sounds German as hell. Yeah. No idea. And dude. you're Mexican? That's crazy. I guess, I guess he is, you know. I mean, so, I'm not. I'm not denying <laughs> his Mex Mexicanism. Right. Mexicanicity. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. Oh, don't, I'm don't certainly not gonna do that. Don't do that. Not here. Smart. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> don't assume. Anyways, uh, he has 11 career wins uh, by sub. Now check this out, though. No wins by knockout. Yeah. No losses by knockout, which is kind of wild to me when you've had 21 fights. True. He never fought like, me though. It's facts. He, he also never fought a 953. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I wonder how, how many episodes in a row. We'll see. You know? We're just going to go with it. But respect, though. I st but for the record, I still haven't made my way over there. Yeah. Maybe after our fantasy I baseball think, I think draft. you're just like, scared. You think I'm scared? Yeah. I've never been scared in my entire life. <laughs> Do you think after our fantasy baseball draft Friday, we should go to Ignite? It's a possibility. And I'll, I'll spinning back fist it. To what, like a 620? Probably with a spinning back fist, yeah. yeah. But anyways, yeah. Trey Ogden, um, the fight with Jordan Levitt, he didn't like do anything. I felt like he was just walking him down, and he was kind of getting outstruck by Jordan Levitt, which is insane to say. Yeah. Because Jordan Levitt, as you know, not the best striker around, not too much power, but he was like chewing his legs up. He's not overly technical or powerful, but he does a good job with his lead hand and yeah. his lead leg. He throws good jabs, good lead hooks, good leg kicks with that front leg. On the ground, we haven't seen too much of him, you know, but that's supposedly what his main thing is. He's a grappler. He's a jiu-jitsu guy. On the other hand, Manuel Torres, Dana White's contender series guy, or as you like to say, dancing with the stars. 1-0 <laughs> in the UFC. Six wins by sub, six wins by KO in his career. Um, with career losses, um, I'm sorry. I don't know what the hell I wrote there. Disregard that part. <laughs> but six wins by sub, six wins by knockout. 12 of his 13 wins are by finish, so that's pretty interesting. We saw him get a knockout after a weird eye poke situation in the Contender Series fight. Oh, I hated that. Yeah, that was terrible. Dude, I really hated that because I really liked the other guy. And the like, his story. Texas dude with the like blonde yeah, hair. Yeah, he's yeah. like, I'm fighting for my mom. She passed away. Right. Just and like, then to, just to lose by a dude poking you in the eye. And right. he was doing decent. In right. And Herb Dean, being Herb Dean... Did nothing about Dude, it. Dude, he, he literally didn't call that. Yeah. I really insanity. hated that. It was bad. I hated that so much that, like, of the entire hours and hours of film that we watched, that yeah. was the most upsetting thing. That was the thing that stuck out to you? Uh, it really upset me. Yeah. Like, it really upset me. Like, I was like, you could, like, I was hit by myself. I was by myself. Right. But, like, on my face, you, I'm sure you could have seen it in the moment, like... Like, I hated it. Yeah, that. it felt like, come on, dude. Like, it felt dirty. Bro, I can't. They're giving me this full intro of how his mom passed away. And, and then the poor dude gets scammed out of a UFC contract. He gets. Done knocked out. And then, he's, and like, then he's like, and Herb Dean's like, no, nah, dude, keep I fighting. I see nothing. Yeah, anyways. I hated that. He got kind of like scammed there. But, anyways, Torres ended up knocking him out. And then in his UFC debut, uh, he dropped Camacho with a nasty two hook combo. 
Yeah. It was just like a right left, like just straight two hooks, pretty filthy. Similarly, we haven't seen too much of him on the ground uh, in the UFC, but he is supposedly good down there. Uh, I have, oh. Pause, no Jeff Molina. <laughs> Speaking of Jeff Molina, <laughs> he has some history with some of the fighters on this card. Hey! Just saying. Yo! I gotta trust the youth Wait, here. Wait, what? Not like that. Like, he's fought some dudes oh. on this card. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter, Yo. bro. What is wrong with you? Don't put that on the rest of them. No, I'm just saying they fought him. Okay, but if I heard you break it down like that, and I'm somebody that fought him, <laughs> I'd be like, yo. I don't know. And that's fine. They seemed a little But that ain't me. Huh? <laughs> anyway... Anyways, I got to trust the younger guy here in Manuel Torres. He just looks way more the part than Ogden does to me. Yeah. The way I see it is if Ogden doesn't get this fight to the ground quickly, he's not going to be able to survive it. Yep. Uh, I know he hasn't been knocked out yet in his career. I think that changes here. I'm going to take Torres. Round two, TKO. Drops him with a hook. A couple follow-up shots. Hopefully it's not Herb Dean in there. Or, yeah, you know, no fight. kidding. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I really like Manuel Torres. As yeah. a prospect, I, dude, he's jacked. Yeah. Like, he's built. And El Loco, I, I, by the way. That's a good nickname. Yep. And, man, I think he's got the look. He's got a lot of power. He's knocked out a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing, like you said, is very upsetting is that he poked that dude in the eye. Yeah. But that was... Felt bad for that guy. I do want to say, I, that guy is a champ again. Back in... Um, the Texas guy? Yeah. The blonde-haired dude? Uh, was it LFA? Or where was he? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Um... We're talking about Colton England, which Colton is a England. cool name, too. Yeah. And this fight's in Texas. How nice would that have been for this kid? I know, man. You know? Um, yeah, he's a Fury. Fury FC. Okay, CFFC. Uh, featherweight champ again. Nice. So, good for him. Let's get or, it. he's a lightweight. Lightweight champ. Down. So, good for him. But, you know, I feel like he'll probably end up in the UFC at some point. Probably. How he old does. is he? Um, Let me see. He is 93. So, what? Old enough. Yeah, 29. Is that our new thing? Because cause hear, hear me out really quickly. Yeah. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Dennis Bazookia is getting in the UFC like real, real soon. Dennis Bazookia deserves to be in the UFC. How old is Dennis Bazookia, by the way? It's, what a good question. But he That's will fine. be in the UFC. I'm going to find that out. And if anybody can, like, we're out here, we're campaigning. Right, so I'm just Dennis saying. Bazookia. If you don't know Dennis Bazookia, check him out. He Dennis Bazookia, how old is he? 25, born in 1997. Yeah. He's getting in the UFC. He's a child. Still. Once Bazookia gets signed, and I bet you he's going to fight on that Aljo card that's coming up. Yep. But anyways, let's say once he gets in, because yeah. he is getting in. He will. Are we uh, moving over to Colin England? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that we, our can next we, can we project? Can we do it? I mean, I'm just saying. We have I, to, I think he deserves We it. need to make sure Bazookia gets in first. Bazookia's getting in. And then, is it Colton or Colin? Colton. Colton England. It's K-O-L-T-U-N. E N G L U N D. Okay, well, T O N. Sorry. Okay, so. But England spelled E N G L U N D. U N D. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So once, shout out Dennis Bazookia, by the way. Shout out once Dennis he gets in, yep. Colton England. Shout out Colton Deal. England. We're Deal. getting him in the UFC. Yep. Deal. Let's go. All right. All right. Let's go back to this fight. Yes. So yeah, like I was saying, I mean, I, I pretty much agree with you. I think Manuel Torres will has a chance to be something. Yeah. As we often say on this podcast, uh, really nice combos, very powerful punches. Legit power, especially in that right hand. Trey Ogden's looked decent. Like you yeah. said, he lost to Jordan Levitt and was getting outstruck at times by Jordan Levitt. Somebody that throws as hard and aggressively as Manuel Torres does, I just don't see it happening for him. I think this is one of the locks of this very tough card to bet. Sure. I'm going to go Manuel Torres by knockout, first or second round. Same. Let's get it. Moving up the card, it's another fight, and this one is at what division? 25, flyweight. 125, a few flyweight fights on this card. Down, that's usually um, a very fun div division to watch. Yes, absolutely, especially if you're not a casual. Mm -hmm. um, it's CJ Vergara versus Daniel Da Silva, yeah. another really tough fight for, for me, in, in my opinion. And mm -hmm. I know the odds are, like, it wasn't as tough as some of the other ones. But I don't think the odds that uh, Vergara should be a three to one favorite. P minus two ninety five, plus two twenty for Da Silva. But what do you think? Uh yeah. So here's the thing, man. Daniel Da Silva to me, he's he's a actually, very. You know what? I'm sorry. I was I, I I was looking at a different fight. Yeah. I apologize. No, you're good. This is a pretty easy one, actually. Okay. Yeah, to me, at least. Sure. Do you want to take it? Or no, you no, want you me go to go for it. Okay. So Daniel Da Silva to me is a very he's very interesting. Yeah. First and foremost, on Tapology, they have him from the ATS gym, but I'm pretty sure he's a shoot-the-box guy. 
I could be wrong, yeah. but I'm fairly certain I've seen him with uh, uh, Charles Oliveira's coach, and his name is just escaping me right now. But anyways, regardless of the fact, he had the fight against Victor Altamirano, which we mentioned earlier. He looked good in that fight, and then he had the Francisco Figueredo fight. He made a huge mistake in that fight. And then? And gave up his leg. And then who did he have after and that? And then after that, your boy, Jeff Molina. <laughs> Damn. Right? Yeah. So, and he looked good in all three of those fights, but he made, like, a huge mistake. Huge mistakes and early on. Right. Yeah. Huge mistakes early on. His cardio looks bad from what we've seen in the UFC. Especially at 125. Right. It looks terrible. Here's a, this kid comes out to kill, and he's really young. He's, what, 26 years old. He comes out there, he comes to kill, he swings aggressive, and he makes massive mistakes early. Yep. Going into, look like, when I first started, like, thinking about this fight... Right off the bat, I was like, man, Daniel De Silva is better than CJ Vergara. Yeah. Like, I think he has more skills I than I thought him. so, too, but then when I watched the tape, it's right. exactly that. He does make a lot of He mistakes. makes a ton of mistakes. If he didn't make those mistakes, I would easily take De Silva here. Anyway, CJ Vergara, we talked a couple months ago about him with the fight with Clayson Rodriguez. Um, he looked good in that fight, got the split decision win. Close fight. Could have went either way. I think maybe Clayton would won that, in my opinion. I thought so, too. But anyways, he's 1-2, and two, could be 0-3 in the UFC. Lost his debut to Ode Osborne. Yeah, and uh, and then last time out was Tatsuro Tyra, who looks like a world beater right, at this exactly, point. Yeah. So like very tough match. schedule. Yeah. UFC's done the kid no favors. Yeah, but he could be zero and three. Well, it's tough too because like a lot of those guys are young. So like you don't. It's almost like right. when they gave Sean O'Malley. I was thinking about this because Cheeto was obviously fighting the main event. Yeah. I was thinking about this. Had they had the UFC known? Let's how you know that the UFC didn't know how good Cheeto was. Yeah, was when they gave O'Malley Cheeto. Yeah, when they did. Because they no, they did not expect him to lose. No, they were they Nobody were babying did. Sean yeah, O'Malley at exactly. that point. Yeah, and they continued to after that. Right. So I think that's proof of like they didn't really know what he was or what they had in him. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I think that kind of works in this favor too. So sorry. Uh, no, you're good. A- anyways, so with this fight, I think I'm forced to trust CJ Vergara in this fight. Yeah. He looks more stable than Daniel De Silva is. Yeah. Like, the chin looks a little bit sus. So, like, the cardio looks a little bit sus. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, there are holes there. The There are things that... He looks like he's better than him in all facets of the yeah. game until well, he screws he's up. He's got holes. Holes. He's got holes. He's got holes. Listen, so, I wouldn't be surprised if he does win Daniel De Silva, but I have to take Vergara. Vergara isn't much of a finisher, and that seems to be the way that you beat Daniel De Silva. Yeah. Anyways, 29-28 Vergara. I think he drops the first round. Then closes out a decision as this kid, Daniel De Silva, starts to wear out, get tired. But again, I would not be shocked in the least bit if he yeah. does get a win. Also, unfortunately for him, if he does lose this fight, Daniel De Silva, that'd be 0-4 in the UFC. You probably get cut. Probably. Yeah. And probably deservedly so. Go brush up on the skills and yeah. come back if you can. Right. And I bet he would. I yeah. feel like he's good enough to be in the UFC. I think he's a very explosive he kid. And yeah, yeah he needs he's, to clean it up. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I, again... That was my initial thought, too, that how close it was. But then watching film and seeing the mistakes that De Silva makes, I think that Vergara is a step up for him, actually, from, like, not from Tyra, but, like, from the let. Like, he, it's better. he's better than... Well, his last fight was Victor Altamirano. Okay, I and think... And Figueredo and Molina. Those are the three guys that he fought in the UFC. Yeah, I mean... This is a step up, you're saying, to all three of those? Mm, I think it's close. Okay. I think it's close. Um, I think if that if De Silva has any chance to win, it'll have to be on the ground. Mm-hmm. He has great jujitsu. He's got great jujitsu. Vergara obviously has much better k- kickboxing, and I just I think it, it's going to be a close fight. I agree with you. I think it'll be twenty nine, twenty eight. You know, I don't think Vergara's the most technical either. I don't think he's like special no. really. Um, but I think he has enough to win this. Ninety three to seven on Tapology for Vergara. Way. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Which is stupid. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, moving up the card, it's the fifth fight of the night, and it's at 170 for Trevin Giles versus Preston Parsons. Yeah. Didn't Preston Parsons fight his last one at 185 too, or am I tripping? Uh, yes, I think believe he made his UFC debut at 85. I yeah. Think. And which is interesting yeah. because both of these guys he fought D Rod on short notice, which to, is yeah. an insane fight to take on short notice. Mm-hmm. Um. Tre- Trevin Giles, I mean. He's got. He's had a tough record. I mean, he's only fifteen and four. It's not like 
the craziest amount of fights. It's yeah. a good amount of fights, but he's uh, recently been doing some grappling. Lost to Mike Malott. Um, last win versus Louis Koske. He has a loss to Duplessis. He actually beat Roman Delizzi, who just fought Vittori, who's been obviously moving up the rankings. That fight was our, very iffy. Though. I was just going to say, yeah. though, you think Delizzi won? I, I think there's an argument to be made. I mean, I, yeah. I thought he won, personally. Yeah. So, um, he he's fought some really good opponents. Michael and Morales, undefeated. Mike Morales, obviously, yeah. I mean, he's, he's fought some really good opponents. GM3, so, yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm still not sure quite who Trevin Giles is at 170. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's got good power. His best weapon is his right hand. He's got an interesting wide stance. You know, it's not quite a karate stance, yeah. but it's an w- interesting wide stance. Like I said, some impressive wins. He has a win against Ryan Spann, too, by the way, early in his career. Really? Early in his career. Let me see when that was. Um, dude, it was really early in his career. That's a trip. Uh, at LFA in 2017. That's a trip. A split decision against uh, Spann. Very interesting. Um, what weight? That's a good question, honestly. I'm curious about that, too. I bet it was at 185. Probably, right? Span moved up to yeah, 205. Yeah, 185. Okay. Yep. Interesting. Very interesting, honestly. Um, yeah, I, it, you know, this is another tough one for me. It really is. This whole card. But yeah. this one, do you agree? It's a, it is a tough one. Mm-hmm. I literally just changed my pick as we were, as you're talking about. I swear to God. I swear to God. I've already done that too on this exact card. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you know, he's best on his feet when he's throwing punches and he's got really nice leg kicks. He's got a nice, fast, high kick, too. He's shown a decent chin. Um, his obvious issue is the ground game. Yeah. I mean, we, we know that that's going to be his, his weak point. He's been working on it. You know, like I said, he, he's been grappling and, and doing um, Fury Pro grappling and things like that. I know he's had a lot of losses recently, but again, I think this is close. Preston Parsons is, you know, a very... Very new fighter, let's yeah. say. He took that Daniel Rodriguez fight on short notice. He got knocked out brutally, but, you know, balls for balls for taking it, for sure. He fought Evan Elder, who we talked about before, I believe, on this podcast. Yeah. Um, and Elder was fighting up a weight class. He looked decent against him, though. Yeah. Um, but Parsons really did put it on him, though. Tons of pressure in that one on the feet. And Parsons is jacked, dude. He slammed the shit out of Elder, too. Yeah. Um, on the other side, you know... We've seen him get KO'd re- fairly recently, right? Um, I think it's a tough fight to call. Obviously, that's why it's pick 'em odds. Is it still pick 'em? Uh, good question. I believe so, though. I-, I know the odds were moving for this fight. I'm not 100 percent sure what they're at right now. Okay. Well, either way, I- it's going to be close for sure. I'm leaning actually Parsons, the 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 decent underdog, or I'm sorry, not the decent underdog. Actually, maybe now it's a damn, it's a even. It's a minus 115 to a minus 110. So okay, I thought I had just seen that he had gone to an underdog. Never yeah. mind. So it's a pick em. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go Parsons, man. I think he's potentially better everywhere. Potentially. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go Parsons by TKO. I think Giles has been low output his last couple fights. Mm-hmm. Like, very slow. Very, like, versus Koski, that first round was terrible. Yeah. None of them were, neither of them were throwing anything. Um, yeah, I think, I think Parsons is for sure better on the ground. And even the striking, you know, potentially... My only thing is, like, what is Trevin Giles at 170? I feel like I haven't seen that much of him. Sure. We haven't seen that much of him. So, but, yeah. The the thing that's throwing me off about this is Trevin Giles is 6-4 is and four in the UFC. He is at, he's had 10 fights yeah. in the UFC compared to a guy who's had two. Mm-hmm. And, and Preston Parsons doesn't look like a world beater. Like, he's not going to no. be anything special in the UFC. So it's like, at first, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, man, Trevin Giles probably handles this kid, you know? Yeah. But... Don't let me... No, no. Don't let me... This is the closest fight to me on the card. Convince anything, yeah. What I have here is, like, the thing that I keep going back to as I think of Preston Parsons is the ground game. He has nine career wins by submission. He's a grappler, and Trevin Giles has struggled there. I have to, at that point, I feel like I'd be lying to myself if I didn't take the younger guy here. Yeah, with more upside. Yeah, part of me but, wants Trevin Giles to win. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna take Preston Parsons. I'm gonna go with a decision, twenty nine, twenty eight, and I'm saying that because I have no idea on this fight. Yep, it is what it is. Yep, I don't even think I said the method, but I think you said TKO. 
Oh, I did say TKO. Yeah, yeah I, I do think he'll get him down and probably TKO. Because he's aggressive. Yeah. He is very aggressive. Yep. So, and if, and if Trevin Giles is going to come out low output and try to, like, we've seen what happens recently, and this is maybe extremes, but a fighter that's a very notoriously slow starter, Peter Young, versus somebody who's going to come out and put it on you right away. And Marab, And yeah. certainly neither, this guy's not Peter Young by any stretch, and neither is this guy Marab. Yeah. But I'm just saying, on a more micro level... Kind of, no, I I, you, I, get, I get where you're coming you know from. I, mean? I, I just like I feel like we could sit here and we could do those kind of comparisons like all day long, yeah. and come up with twenty reasons why Giles wins and twenty yes. reasons why Parsons wins. Yeah. So like I flopped three times already on yeah. this today. I'm gonna flop ten more times before the card. Yeah. Don't bet on it. As I said, so instead, there's better things to bet on. Instead, let's just move on right. to Steven Peterson <laughs> versus Lucas Alexander, mm -hmm. and this one is happening at featherweight. Yeah. This is a, I mean, this was hard for me, again, to really form an opinion on, but I'll, I'll let you take this one first. Sure, and welcome to this card, because that's what this card is for the thousandth time. Every yeah. fight is difficult. Yeah. Anyway, Steven Peterson, 3-4 and four in the UFC. Last time out, uh, lost to Julian Arosa. Before that, he beat the absolute shit out of Chase Hooper, yeah. which was so wild. That was like, that was like a long time coming, and we were waiting yeah. for Chase Hooper to get his ass That beat. seemed yeah. a little like, it seemed like child abuse. And I love Chase Hooper. It did. But you know what I mean? that young, but yeah. Yeah, not, but that's what anymore, it felt yeah. like. It was like, dude, like, he's just babying this kid. Like, you don't know what the hell's going on mm -hmm. here. And this is the UFC, dude. Like, yep. And even on the ground, like, he was working him. Yeah, he was just working him. But Steven Peterson, the first thing that comes to mind is absolutely tough as hell. Tough as hell. Like, that's what I've written yeah, down, too. This kid is, he's not a kid. This dude is aggressive. He's not all that technical, but he is down to get into a scrap. He wins fights by being the tougher guy. Yeah. That's how he wins his fights. He's not going to win because he's a better kickboxer, because he's got better technique. He's going to win because he's more man than you. And like Kind of like Nate Landwehr. I love Nate Landwehr. I, I love can't Nate wait Landwehr, too. There. Yeah, same. I do, too. But anyways, he, he does make mistakes, and he makes mistakes because he walks his opponents down thinking he's just way too tough. You know what I mean? Yeah. Lucas Alexander, long-bodied, powerful Brazilian striker, great kicks, explosive, good defensive grappler. You don't really see him going for takedowns, but he does a good job in the scrambles when the fight does get down to the ground. He looks pretty legit. His last fight, or I'm sorry, he lost his debut, which was on short notice. You think he looks legit? I think he looks decently legit. Um, he I, lost I, He lost to Joe I'll Anderson Brito, yeah. who was an absolute killer. Dude, he murdered him Yeah, and fight, that's, that's not a fun he, fight. He manhandled the shit out of him in that fight. And really quickly, all three of his career losses have come by sub, which is really interesting. I don't see Steven Peterson subbing him here. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it. I see Alexander staying aggressive. I see him getting in Peterson's face and going wild, tiring him out. <laughs> I'm saying, Peters, dude, the Jeff Molina thing's got you worked up. Yeah. Can we just <laughs> talk? <laughs> I'm in the mindset. Now. I'm saying Peterson survives an onslaught in round one. Peterson? I'm saying he survives an onslaught in round one, yep. and then in round two, he eventually gets TKO'd. I'm going with Lucas Alexander here, which hurts me to say because I like Steven Peterson. Yeah, interesting. I'll take the dog. Interesting. Yeah. I think Lucas Alexander is, really watching his film was brutal. Yeah, he's not He's not like all that not good. not at all exciting. But he's powerful. I don't think he's, and he's even powerful. To okay, be fair. I really, I really haven't seen that power like Fair. That. I think he's good at range. He's got nice feints. He seems very calm and collected, but almost to a fault. Yeah. To me, he seemed like, like, dude, just get going. Like, just go. You're young. Like, get after it. I think he's going to push the pace in this fight. We'll see. If he does, yeah. I could see him winning it. And mm -hmm. again, very close fight. I hate it. My I only hate thing this. is, like, is this fight going to happen? Steven Peterson has missed weight his last two fights. Well, let's find out. By four and, like, four and two pounds, I want to say. Um, that Julian Arosa fight was, man... Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, <laughs> That's the word? I mean, it was. And, yeah. it's, you know, not a great record. 19 and 10. Uh, he's got a lot of a lot of losses, but he seems pretty well-rounded. And, and you, like you said, he's tough as hell. I just don't think that Lucas Alexander is quite ready for the UFC yet. I'm going to go with Steven Peterson outlasting him to a 29-28 decision. I'll be rooting for Steven Peterson. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm I, not parting I, I, ways I with it. money on this card. Yeah. But yes, I will be rooting for Steven I'm sure Peterson. You will, but the end. Yeah. I oh, yeah, yeah. You, you will have sure. some bets on it. Because I'm a degenerate. You're a, I was going to say but, you're a goddamn liar. By yeah. the way, why is, it, why is Steven Peter Peterson's nickname Ocho? I don't know, but it's cool. It's cool. I guess. Eight? I mean, yeah. Yeah, whatever. 
moving down, moving up the card, it's Daniel Pineda versus Tucker Lutz. Tucker and Lutz. I'm very curious to see what you have to say about this one. Oh, you are curious, aren't you? I am. I am. Because Jeff Medlina curious or like... Oh. Di- no, nah, because I know... Yeah. I'm, this one I feel pretty good about. Okay. So. So you're you're comfortable in this pick is what you're saying. I'm comfortable in my skin, brother. Comfortable in your skin. All right. Um, you want do you want my pick? Do you want my breakdown? Like yeah, let me hear it, man. Damn. Sure. Okay. So, you gonna make me beg for it? No, no. I just don't know. I didn't know if you were saying like. Oh, you didn't know. Yo, ass, but call somebody. And while you call somebody, you should tell them to subscribe to the ten seven. Hey, MMA. I'm so glad you did that. Yeah, like just do it. It's not that difficult. The ten seven MMA. We're here on YouTube. Subscribe. Ring the little bell. Go to Instagram, the107MMA. Follow us. That's it. Leave a like, a comment. Let us know how you feel. Do we suck? Let us know. Are we good? Let us know. You like us? You hate us? We'd like to hear it. And we haven't blown up yet. By this point, we'll have we'll listen to everything you have to say. Right. So And we'll respond to who it. Who knows? After a couple thousand followers and whatnot... <laughs> Right. Can't tell me shit. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so right now, you could be in the first 100 subscribers on YouTube. Yep. You could be like, dude, I followed these guys when they had like 60 followers, dude. Right. Actually, we already have 65, so. <laughs> this could be us, but you playing. Just do it. Um, Anyways. Anyway, yes. Daniel Pineda, Tucker yeah. Lutz, correct? That's where we are on this card? Correct. One and one for Tucker Lutz in the UFC. First time out, beat Kevin Aguilar at UFC 262. And then in a second out. Daniel Pineda. Lost to. Pat Sabatini. <laughs> so he lost Here him. We, hit me with it. Here we go. So he Who lost. This is Mike Goldberg. Bro. I'm down for Goldie, bro. He, I, honestly, he was God. fun. I and I do like John Anik, but I, no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I love John Anik. He's dope. But, Shout out John Anik. Shout out Mike Goldberg. You said. It. Yeah. So, anyways, he lost in his second fight to Pat Sabatini, which broke his 11 fight winning streak. He's a wrestler. He hasn't shown that. Like, I'm sorry, not he hasn't shown that. He just got out wrestled by Pat Sabatini, yeah. who was an absolute was a savage on the ground. Dog on the yeah. ground. Anyways, Daniel Pineda, stupidly explosive fighter. He's one of those dudes that comes out guns blazing, and if he doesn't finish you in the first few minutes, you're probably gonna finish him. Yeah, it's that typical story. You've been hearing that a lot lately. Um, that may be a bit exaggerated, but yeah, you know, maybe not. What are you laughing about? What are you giggling for? <laughs> so, anyways. I don't know if he. I don't think he has that cardio anymore at this point. I don't know if he ever had that cardio. To be honest with you. Yeah. By the way, I had no clue that he was thirty-seven when I was watching film. Yeah, and then you're like, holy and shit. when I was like, right. you know, looking at the topology page, I'm like, dude, holy shit. Yeah. Um, it here, doesn't matter. Yeah. So so here I have to take the age. I have to go with the twenty-eight year old. I gotta trust Lutz. I say Lutz gets him down early in the second. Takes his back. RNC. I'm going RNC round two. Yep. Yeah. I. I agree, Lutz. I actually really like Lutz. And I think, really quickly, stupid, stupid little odd, like, yeah. thing here. I think RNC submission round two, I don't think he taps. I think he goes out. I think he oh. just goes out on his shield. Yeah. There's nothing to, like, yeah. it's not, like, a cool thing, but. That's cool. Yeah. I hope that happens for you. Thank you. Can you bet that? That'd be interesting. I'm sure there's a sports book somewhere where you can. Right. No tap, sleep. Oh, the odds on that you would be could, amazing. Imagine dude. betting, like. Snap like nap tap snap, like, like broken like, arm, like yeah. he breaks his shit. So I'm sure that's somewhere, dude. How do I see all these crazy like random bets? Like oh, oh like the odds on like and like I never see them on any sports book. Right, on shit like that. If you're the sport book that has that, let us know. You right. could sponsor us. We we would plug the shit out of you. We will sell our souls. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'll be like betonline.ag. We'll play commercials. It'll be dope. <laughs> That would be such a cool thing. Yeah, anyway, I, I actually really like Lutz. He lost his pro debut and then won 11 straight. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I really like that. What, is it, like, what does that tell you? Like, Just think about that. Like, You went out, first pro fight, you got your ass kicked. And then you're like, you know what, man? I want to do this shit. Fudge that. Fudge it. 11 straight. That's impressive. I really like that. I yeah, think that's that says cool. something. Yes, he lost to Pat Sabatini, who's an absolute dog on the ground. But he didn't look like completely outclassed. Mm-mm. Like he never got submitted. He, no. Like until like, you know, he was like putting up a fight basically. Yeah. You know, um, Pineda is not going to do all that on the ground. He's just not going to. I, I think Lutz is the younger guy. I don't think he is the more. He's the younger guy. <laughs> he's the more technical striker. And even if he does go to grappling, Pineda, we've seen that 
he can survive against an even more skilled grappler. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go Lutz by decision, 30-27. Bet. I don't know how many we've disagreed on so far. One or two, I think. Let's count it. All right. We both agreed on this one. Only one. Okay. Wait, did you say Giles or you said Parsons? Yeah. You sticking by that? Yeah. For now. You said Salvador too. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm fifty. I'm dead fifty fifty on Vidal versus Colin, but we agreed technically. So for for now, we've only disagreed on um, one. Peterson versus Alexander. Okay. Um, moving up the card, and this is a very interesting one. Main card opener. Main card opener, and a very exciting fighter. Chidi Nijikwani versus Albert Durayev. Yeah. I love that. Did you see uh, Durayev's topology pick? Yeah. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> it's, like, it's like him in the Beamer. No, or no. In the, the Benz. No, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That yeah. is dope. That's fire. He looks like Baron Corbin. Oh, I swear to Shout God, he Baron looks like Corbin. Baron Corbin. Yeah. Dude. That's you wild. should post this. <laughs> like, when you're putting up the video, you got to post this. Okay. <laughs> this I'm going to try to edit that in. No, you don't have to do all that. But if, I'll, if say, anything, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below perfect, perfect. to his tapology perfect. page. How and about that? We're going to keep doing timestamps, by the way. I yeah. hope you guys like that shit because it took... Like an hour and a half to do. Yeah, I so, did. Um, he was very stressed about it. I was, honestly. I was. So we know he's Beamer, Benz, or Bentley. He's a Benz guy. Oh, there's no question. Okay. What do you think he drinks? Ooh, Albert Duraev? Yep. I don't think his religion allows him to. Oh, he's Muslim? Yeah. He's one, of, he's one of those guys. I think he's Dagestani, I believe. Yeah, for sure. Look at the yeah. beard. Ah, oh, never mind. He's not drinking. Nope. He's just, like, working hard. <laughs> I feel that. I mean, I don't feel that. Oh, working hard is great, but then, like, what? Then I'm just not going to turn up? You got to turn up sometimes. Couldn't be me. Hey. Um, are we going to the Masvidal boxing thing? Yeah. I'm serious. No, no, yeah, 100%. Can we get... What like, is that, in a week or something? Tonight. Yeah, yeah get them to, Once we're done with this, we'll go get the tickets, or we'll order them online. If, if you guys want to join us, April 1st, I believe, is that correct? Oh, my God. I'm going to C2E2 that day, but I'm still down to All do right, that. let's do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Or okay. If he, you don't know what he drink. What does Chidi and Jaquani drink? Man, I have no idea, dude. Where is he from? Well, he's uh, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Originally, I don't know. That, man, that's tough, dude. Like, see, to me, it would have to like I it would like have to be a regional it. thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. Like I don't think he does it. either. Have you heard his voice? He's got like a really deep voice, yeah. and it's like, yeah. I don't think he drinks. He probably smokes like a pack of Newports a day. I was gonna say Newports. Yeah, or like yep. at least Black and Milds, like yeah. while he's chilling. That seems racially charged. That's not racially charged. Okay, I'm just saying. But anyway, I've met a lot of people that smoke Black and Milds. He fits the bill. Sure. And the voice doesn't help. No, the voice is but cool voice though. So what do you think about this? Uh, the fight. Yeah. Um. Or would, Albert, you, or would you like me to get into it? No, that's fine. Okay, please. Uh, Albert Duraev is the younger of the two, believe it or not. Yeah. By two whole days. Oh, that's adorable. He's two days younger than Chidi and Jaquani. Okay. Really random. Uh, Albert Duraev, one and one in the promotion. Beat Kapilov in his debut. Lost to Joaquin Buckley last time out. The Buckley he fight. He beat his ass. Dude. Yeah. The, the Buckley by fight. By the way, they trained together. They had trained together. Uh, before that. Yeah. And, like uh, Duraev took the fight. Because it was an easy fight, so to speak. Right. And he got his ass beat. Right. So, Buckley ended up closing his eye. So, it was a doctor stoppage. Not an actual TKO. He didn't, like, knock him out and put him Dude, to sleep or anything. Some but, shots. But, and but that, yeah. that head kick in the first round that he ate was insane. Yeah. Uh, weirdly enough, for Duraev, he's like a takedown machine. And he chose not to do that for the Joaquin Buckley fight. Probably the pride thing. Probably the pride thing. Yeah. Probably because he thinks Joaquin Buckley's a very easy fight for him. But anyways, probably a bad decision there. I think what this fight comes down to is if he can take Chidi down and hold him, he should win. If he can't, then Chidi should win on the feet. I think he's the better striker of the two. Um, he opened as a dog, and now he's the favorite Chidi in Jaquani, which is really weird. He's been bet up to like a pretty uh, sizable favorite. I hate that. Um, I hate that. Anyways, good power. And you, you have to mention the RoboCop fight where he busted him open. And had that filthy he gash had, on his face. Stumbled. Yeah. He had Robocop stumbling. That was such a wild... The fight was, like, pretty good. It was the wrong. cut, is, as dis- as yeah, lasted, the cut is disgusting and amazing. Disgusting. 
Um, Chidi and Jaquani, for what it's worth, does have good takedown defense. He's been taken he down does. multiple times in the UFC. He reminds me of Leon Edwards with, with his takedown Sure, and, and that's a pretty good comparison. Um, yeah, a good takedown defense. Here's the thing. Let's take their last times out, right? This is how I had to like watch, think about this fight. Albert Duraev didn't attempt to take Joaquin Buckley down. Chidi and Jaquani pieced up RoboCop. If Duraev doesn't or can't take down Njaquani, I don't see him winning a kickboxing that's fight exactly against him. That's exactly what this fight is, Dino. It's yeah. Like, you, that's a, what you just broke down is exactly what it right. is. Right. So I think if Duraev relies on the wrestling, he could do it, but I got to take Chidi Njaquani second round TKO. Yeah, I agree, man. Chidi Chidi Bang Bang, by the way, Amazing. is his nickname. That's Amazing. insane. Um, I like Albert Duraev. He's really decent. Do. He's a solid fighter. Chidi Njaquani, first of all, Dude, look at his record before he... Or look at the people that he fought before he got to the UFC, okay? Yeah. Um, he fought Andre Fialo. Mel, he was supposed to fight at, Melvin, man. At Bellator. Knocked yeah. him out in 20 seconds. He fought Melvin Gilliard. Yep. At Bellator. Unanimous decision. Max Griffin. Max Griffin. Split decision. So, even before he came to the UFC... Alan Jobin. Yeah, boy. Male model Alan Jobin. Boom. He is 22-8, and eight, and he has had a lot of high-level fights, man. Yeah. And we've seen him fight wrestlers, and sure, Rodriguez puts, for somebody as jacked as Rodriguez is, dude, he puts on a crazy pace. That shit is insane. Yeah. Um, Chidi has an 80-inch reach, and he's six foot three at 185. He's so, an 80-inch reach, wow. 80-inch reach. There's not a lot of people like that, man. He's got legit power in his hands, too. Yeah. You know, it's not like he's 6'3", he'll, he'll touch you up here and there. He's got a lot of power. Sometimes he's a little hesitant for me. He's really good in the clinch, super athletic. Dude, look at look at a high level guy like Mar- or high, decent high level guy striker like Mark Andre Barrio. Yeah. What he did to him in twenty seconds, dude, knocked him out cold. Um, like you said, man, it's can derive take him down. I think Chidi has really good takedown defense. Look at derive versus Buckley. I'm sure there was emotions in that fight and things like mm-hmm. that. But in that excuse me, in that fight, Buckley is obviously not nearly as long and rangy as. Cheaty is. Yeah. And he was barely able to get Buckley down. So, I don't know, man. It's tough. I think it's, you know, what are the odds you said? I know Cheaty's a, a favorite by how much now? Good question. Let's see. 195. I don't, I mean, it's not bad. I, I feel like it should really be a pickup, to be yeah. honest. Um, but yeah, I agree with you, man. I think Duraev sometimes is a little too down to strike. And if he does that with Cheaty, he's going out, man. So. Yeah, I'm gonna go cheaty by knockout as well. Also, really quickly, I'm I'm looking at his tapology page. His middle name, Cheaty, is Cheaty Godson Onjakwani Onjaku Dash Ani. That's that's weird. I thought it was just Cheaty and Jaquani as Damn, one name. Well, you should speak up about that. Like I'm just speak saying. your truth, King. Come on. You know? <laughs> Don't let them like misappropriate your name. All right. It's God's plan. I'm saying. Yeah. Ew. What was that one NBA player? It was like God's... God Sham God. Nah, dude. There was one It was like... It was literally like... <laughs> I have no idea. And his, him and his brother. Like, I forgot what it was, but it was literally like God's favorite or something. <laughs> like, bro. <laughs> how, do you, how do you know? <laughs> like, anyway, um, moving up the card, and this is a really, really interesting I hate it. fight for I me. I hate it. And it's a really tough one to call, too. I don't know if you felt like I did, but yep. I thought this one was really tough. It's Alex Perez mm-hmm. versus Manel Cap. Yeah. And, man, uh, Alex Perez has been in the UFC, a, like, a really long time. Yeah. He's only 31, I want to say 31. Barely just turned 31 four yeah. days ago. Happy birthday, Alex Perez. Shout out, Alex Perez. Um, He fought Davison for the flyweight belt. You know, got choked out in the first round, I want to yeah. say, right? Yep. He fought Pantoja, who... Got choked out in the first round. Like, that's a crazy... That's a crazy, mm-hmm. like... Well, I mean, he was at the top of the division. I mean, yeah, he that's was. That's what you do. But you know what's crazy, though? Like, looking at his record, a lot of these names, I'm like, who the fuck are these guys, dude? Mm-hmm. Like, he hasn't re- he hasn't been active in recent years at all. Right. And, like, the guys, when he was at the top, like, not, not, not a single one of these guys are in the UFC stuff. Yeah. Who... who like, look at, look at the typology list. Mark De La Rosa, okay, maybe him. Juicy Formiga, gone. Gone. Yeah. Jordan Espinosa, gone. Wild. Joe Benavidez, gone. Like, 
You feel me? Like, all the people that he's... And so, like, at first I was like, man. And then, like, I watched his tape and I'm like, oh, I remember this guy. Of course. But then look at the canceled fights. Kai Kara France and Miro oh, no, the, the, the canceled fights are yeah. high level. Mashnel, Oscar well, Askarov. Well, I would have loved to watch any of those. Right, Moreno. They would have given me a better measuring stick of, like, where Alex, Alex Perez actually is. Right. He's still a young guy, relatively speaking. You know, we've seen him get choked out really bad last couple fights. He's a very dangerous kickboxer, man. He's got really powerful body kicks. Really nice leg kicks. Very nice fast, leg kicks. Fast and powerful. Like, he throws them with intent. Like, he throws them to hurt you. And even Figueredo, like, he hurt him with some body kicks. Yeah. Man. Like, he was uh, as, as much time as he, as he had. Um, against Formiga, he literally, like, ended the fight with, with leg kicks. Mm -hmm. So, um, and he's a wrestler first, which is kind of crazy to me. After watching his film, it looks like he just wants to stand and bang. Yeah. But... Manuel Cap, though, or Manuel Cap, sorry, is, like, I really hope that he wins this fight. Okay. More than anything. He, he's 5'5". Five five. He's a little tank, dude. Mm -hmm. He's crazy explosive, super fast hands, probably the best power in his hands in the division. Just as dangerous on his back foot as he is moving forward. Yeah. You know, I worry about the leg kicks because he is pretty heavy on that front leg at times. Um, did he beat Zalgas? Yeah. Is it Magulov? Mm -hmm. Is he making a comeback, by the way? I heard, doesn't he have, like, multiple wives, too? I, I don't know. I recently read that, I think, that he's making a comeback, and he has, like, several wives. Uh, they're not related, by the way, but... Um, yeah, he knocked out Zumagulov, yeah. Yeah, he, he TKO'd him. I remember that. Um, yeah, it's tough, man. I think Alex Perez is the more well-rounded fighter. Mm -hmm. I just think that his inactivity... Plus, I really think that Manel Cap is, like, legit, legit. Yeah. I think he could be a title contender if he continues uh, we haven't really seen his ground game too yeah. much um but i'm gonna go with cap i think he uh, i think he knocks him out sure thoughts i think manel cop okay first and foremost i just want to say i do really like both of these guys like i'm a big fan of both of them manel cop is a certified my boy like 100 percent but I also do like Alex Perez. Anyways, as far as the technical striking is concerned, I do think Manel Cop is the better technical striker. As you mentioned, uh, Alex Perez, phenomenal leg kicks. He is a good striker too, though. Like, he is a overall good striker. He very much is. I don't think he gets the credit for it. I think a lot of newer fans think he's just some bum because of his last two performances. Yeah. And he's looked terrible and nah, gotten choked nah, out in the first not. round. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I think... This is a wildly close fight to me. I have to stick with Manel Cop, even though I think his fight... Originally, IQ, I was leaning Alex Perez. I was, too. Just so you know. And right. originally, I was leaning Manel Cop. Then I went to Perez while watching film. And then at the end, I couldn't stop dwelling on the fact that Manel Cop is on a winning streak. Alex Perez is on a losing streak. I know it's to the top level, guys, as you if mentioned. If it goes three rounds, Alex and Perez is winning this. Maybe. And the thing with Manel Cop, you know, is like... No offense, again, he's a my boy. He is dumb, dude. He fights really stupid. He makes bad mistakes. He does. He leaves his hands. Like he's showboaty. He can like, too, though. He makes mistakes too. Right. But, but those have generally ground. been in the more grappling the exchanges, yeah. right? I don't think Manel Cop's choking him. I don't think Manel Cop uh, by no sub way. is a possibility. No, it's not. So, just because we stick. said that, they'll sprinkle a bit on sprinkle Manel Cop. Yeah. So I'll stick with Manel Cop. I may mess around and even bet Alex Perez as the underdog if the price gets crazy on not Saturday. Not on a parlay, though. No, not on a parlay. Just as a one-off. Yeah. Like, if it ends up getting to, like, 3-1 to one or something, I'll bet on Alex Perez. I'll do Perez. Perez by decision. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah, we'll see what happens. I could absolutely see that. I could see a 29-28 Perez decision. I think Perez needs a win. He does. I mean, yeah, yeah. he does. And it would be a real shame if he got cut after that. I don't yeah, oh, yeah. I don't think so either, but... but it would be a real shame if he Yeah. Um, moving up to the third to last fight on the card, and just... I'm not a huge fan of either of these fighters. It's Andrea Lee versus Macy Barber. Yeah. Thoughts? It's them two. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, with this fight, what do they drink? Oh, God. Switch it up on you. Andrea Lee, like... Is like a little Bud Light. Like, Bud Light. I'll have a little Bud Light. Like she's okay. gonna like she's gonna like even if she doesn't really like it, she'll like want to be like oh I'm a man's girl like right. She's gonna have it's a like drink. the southern in her. Her man's also like a Nazi. So, yeah, that's yeah. what they say. Yeah. yeah. And then her coach was like yelling racist shit, right? Oh, was he? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> and Macy Barber, ugh, yeah, she bothers me, man. I don't know. Macy Barber, she's probably drinking like I don't know. 
Probably like a whiskey sour. Whiskey sour? Yeah. You know what vibe she was giving me? Mm. Like Burnett's, like cheap ass vodka, like college vodka. <laughs> I mean, because she looks like Cause she's young. every ISU girl right. <laughs> you've ever run into. Right. You know what I mean? That was the vibe she was giving me, but I like it. Definitely yeah. Bud Light. Definitely Whiskey sour is a little unique for me. Yeah. I I don't Look at quite that forehead. Dude. I don't quite agree with it. Look at but that forehead. That's a square forehead. That's fine. Don't be mean to her. I'm not being mean to her. I guess I'm being mean to her. Yeah. Good for uh, her. Dude, anywho. She's out here. She's doing her thing. Right. Drinking whiskey sours. Who am I to say? Do you do you like whiskey sours? They're too sweet for me. Yeah, a little sweet. This, by the way, this is kind of sweet. It is kind of. But sweet. I do like it. It's thirty five percent, of course. Right. Which always the flavored ones are a little. Generally, less. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's. I wouldn't say it's quite as sweet as some of the other like flavored whiskeys or agreed alcohols, which are agreed. even more sweet typically. Shout out Proper Twelve. Shout out Proper Number Twelve. We have a new series coming for you guys real soon. Stay tuned for that. Yep. That'll be fun. Um. Anyways, Macy Barber versus Andrea Lee. Macy Barber is six and two in the promotion, three fight winning streak. Even though the Miranda Maverick fight was a terrible decision, mm, that's she such should, a cool name. She should have Miranda Maverick. I wish my last name was Maverick. It's a good. You could change it. Do you know Maverick? You could change it. No, that I'd be a poser, dude. I'd be a poser if I just changed you it. You'd be Mustang, like another kind of horse. Do you know Mustang? Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. I by the way, I have a theory that the name Johnny. Yeah. Any last name sounds works, good. and also. The last name Jones, any first name works. Johnny Jones. Shout out John Jones, Johnny Jones. Like, you could be Hulk Jones. Right. Table Jones. Like, Johnny... Epstein. <laughs> oh, no! Why not? <laughs> no! <laughs> That's the one... The one name, you know, what, doesn't yeah, work. You got me there. Anyways, Macy Barber, six and two in the promotion. As I mentioned, her that fight against Miranda Maverick. We got a hashtag Epstein. Bad, bad robbery. Um, her two losses were to the current champ, your girl Alexa Grasso, mm -hmm. and Roxanne oh, Modafferi. She was supposed to be the next big thing, Why and then Alexa she kind Grasso of Alexa show her toesies on. Did you see that? Yeah, people were asking for it. I know, and she's like, "Ooh, that's weird," but but here, here they on. are. Like, hey. don't do that. Anyways, you can get you can charge money for that. It's not my thing. Like, are right. you a foot guy? I'm not a foot guy. I'm not a foot guy either. Couldn't, but be, like, couldn't you, be me. You can charge for that. I know some foot guys. You know some foot guys? Oh yeah. They you watch the show. You know them too. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> shout out my foot guys then in <laughs> yeah, the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyways, she was supposed to be like the next big thing, Macy Barber. Yeah, and she ain't. And she hasn't been. She she's. Ain't, I guess she's on a winning streak. She, ain't. she moved to Team Alpha Male recently. Mm hmm. See what that does. She doesn't have like any danger factor to her though. She's like a straight decision fighter. Yep. Which turns me off a little bit. She lost to Roxanne Modafferi. She was like a plus, like a minus eight hundred favorite. Right. Like, and then UFC legend Roxanne Modafferi. Andrea Lee, with all the like racist shit you were talking about earlier, her mm -hmm. nickname's KGB. So I don't know if that's like very fitting or mm -hmm. maybe you should change that. Anyways, on the other hand, she's really dangerous. Andrea yeah. Lee, like she, like when she's going, she's going. Yeah. I don't remember what fight it was, but I think it was last week when it, oh, it was the Joanne Wood fight. Yeah. She beat the hell out of Joanne Wood. Like she was. She did. She Joanne looked, Wood sucks so bad. Stop! Don't be mean. Did she retire? No. Sure. So, anyways, here's how I see it. I Joanne, think Lauren I think Hulk if it's on the women. feet, I right. think if it's, if it's on the feet, Andrea Lee wins the fight. I think if she's the one shooting takedowns on Macy Barber, she wins the fight. Yep. The only way Andrea Lee loses this fight is if Macy Barber's the one shooting takedowns on her and getting control time. Mm. I'll take the dog in Andrea Lee, man. Maybe Macy Barber's improved that team alpha male. She's she young. Dog in her. She's young enough to have done that. Yeah. But I can't pick her until I see that from her. Mm. So Andrea Lee passes the eye test for me 29-28. Yep. Yeah, here, this is going to be another one we disagree on. Okay. Um, I think Andrea Lee is nothing special, really. I think Macy Barber is nothing special, really. She's 7-2 and two in the UFC, like you said, though. Yeah. Was really hyped up. Ended up being really nothing. Had some weirdly boring fight. All of her fights are really boring, yeah. to be honest. Um, Lee's 2-1 two and, two and one in her last three, but her striking has looked better and better. Again, I do think this is a close fight. Mm -hmm. What are the odds on this one, by the way? As of right now... It's minus 210 for Macy Barber. Minus 210. Okay. So I feel like Vegas is obviously really good about this stuff. Minus 900 against Montefiore, huge upset. Uh, minus 350 over I. So I feel like Vegas is like realizing who she is now. And I think that's about right. I'm not a huge Macy fan, but I think she's pretty much better everywhere than Lee at this point. Yeah. I think she's the younger fighter. 
Andrea Lee is 34. Yep. Macy Barber is 24. You know, if you just think about their lifestyles, I feel like Andrea Lee at 34 is not, and I hope, you know, I'm not taking anything away, but I don't know. I'm just yeah. assuming. I'm just a guy sitting here. At 34, I feel like she's not going out there and crushing workouts as hard as Macy Barber is at 24 at this point. That's so, fair. And I think in these kind of weight classes, that could be all the difference. I'm going to go with Macy Barber, 29-28 decision. I understand why the odds are what they are. Like, I get it. Macy Barber should be getting better. So, again, it, maybe maybe she shows that. I, I have to stick with Andrea Lee and what I've seen. Yep. Cool. By the way, we are at one hour right now. Beautiful. Um, three fights left. Third to last fight. It's Nate the Train Landwehr versus Austin Lights Out. Lingo. Choo -choo. I know both of us really are big fans of Nate Landwehr. <laughs> the guy just brings it absolutely every fight. He, yeah. he is incapable of having a bad fight. Um, has shown a really good chin. You know, has been in some absolute scraps. <clears throat> I feel like Nate Landwehr is the type of guy you have to finish him in the first round. If you're not finishing L Nate Landwehr in the first round, he's going to wear you down. He's going, you can't keep up the same pace. You're just not as tough as Nate Landwehr is. He's going to work you down, and he's going to eventually break you. Look what he did to David Onama. What a good fight. What a great fight that was. He lost that first round. David Onama really showed his length and his pop. He was piecing him up very fast. The faster fight. He was bigger, faster, stronger. Yeah. By the middle of the second round, it did not matter. Nate Landwehr had him down, and it was literally flinging his body around. David Onama was, like, throwing his body cage to cage because yeah. he didn't know what to do with himself. He was done for, dude. And then, um, weirdly enough, in the third round, he started rocking Nate Landwehr, but yeah. it was because Landwehr was, like, playing with his food. Yeah, like, exactly. he wanted the crowd Exa to go exactly. crazy. Exactly. Insane fight. You guys should check that out. Eventually, he did end up finishing him, right? Or did he no, it went to decision. decision. That's yeah. right. He did finish Ludovic Klein, who we've talked about on this podcast before. Yeah. Ludovic Klein, obviously, really high-level striker. Same kind of thing, though. Lost the first round, was getting pieced up, ate some big shots, showed a good chin. And Ludovic Klein was really down to bang with him in that first round. And then you just can't. Second, third round, you just can't do it with this guy, man. He's going to break you down. So is he pr great anywhere? He's probably not great anywhere. He's no. nice in the clinch. He's got some good hands. He's got some power. You know, not like this, but not a lot. Like, he doesn't have, like, one-punch knockout power, you right. know? Um, but, again, he just wears you down, man. He's that kind of fighter. Austin Lingo, I'm not. I'm genuinely not a huge fan. Yeah. You know, I think he's very heavy on that lead leg. That's something that I noticed. He lost his debut to Yusuf Zalal. He's won two since against, you know, whatever competition. He's shown a lot of heart, kind of like Nate Landwehr too, obviously. Um, he's got some legit power in his hands. Mm -hmm. His grappling is, you know, whatever. Landwehr might be, I think he's better on the ground probably, to be honest. Yeah, maybe. We haven't seen a ton of Lingo on the ground. Because all he really likes to do is stand and, stand and bang. I think this fight's pretty simple, man. I think if Nate Landwehr can survive the first round, Austin Lingo, you know, is going to come out hot. If he can survive that first round, I think Nate Landwehr wins it 29-28 and wears him down and wins the second two rounds and maybe even gets a finish. Fair. Uh, I just want to mention one thing about Nate Landwehr. There was this old, like, Sean O'Malley video from, like, a year and a half ago yeah. where they were like, who are your favorite fighters in the UFC? Like, who are your favorite fighters to they watch? O'Malley? Yeah. yeah. And O'Malley's like, well... Like me, you know, like yeah. myself. There, give us your top five. He's like, well, me, like Connor. He's like, oh, like Izzy. That's amazing. And yeah. then it was like, it was like me, Connor, Izzy. Like, I'm just saying, for example, like yeah. Yuri. It was like someone wild. And he goes, and that crazy guy that fucking yells shit. And then they put up a picture of Nate Landwehr. That's amazing. And I was like, that's unreal. That. Like he didn't know his name, but they edited it in. You know what I that's mean? Amazing. For it to be him. But anyways, pretty funny. And I get it. Yeah, he's fun, dude. He is very fun to watch. I'll tell you this. I think damn near a lock that this is fight of the night. Hey, uh, like, I think this yeah. fight's going to be bananas. Um, it's a Nate Landwehr fight. Right. Nate Landwehr is better than Austin Lingo. He is. To me. Yeah. Austin Lingo does have power. And yeah, Nate he's Landwehr. He's got more power than right, And Nate Landwehr does not mind getting hit, yeah. which is not a great recipe. The thing that's having me lean towards Nate Landwehr is the fact that Austin Lingo is cutting weight for the second time in two, three weeks. He was supposed to fight Ricardo Hamos, what, like two weeks ago, and he missed weight by like 9, 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. So that fight was canceled. So he's cutting weight again after two weeks. I don't think that fares well for your power or your chin. Yeah. So as you said, I'll say 29, 28, Nate Landwehr in an insane barn burner of a fight. 
Um, I would probably pick Austin Lingo if it weren't the situation that we're in. Interesting. Like if, if he was fresh, full yeah, camp for you're, this you're guy. A big Austin Lingo. But yeah, I'm taking Nate the train. Yeah. What do you mean? No. Yeah. All right. Co main event Holly Holm versus Yana Santos. Yeah. Formerly known, for, the fighter formerly known as Yana, Yana Kuniskawa. Give me your thoughts on this one. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's too much to say here. I don't think there's too much to think about here. Holly Holm is 41 years old. Yana Santos hasn't fought in years. She's had a child in that off time. And Holly, that's a, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. And she's a former champion. She doesn't get hit too much. Yana Kunitskaya, sorry, Yana Santos doesn't, she doesn't, she's not a power fighter. She's not a girl that's going to win fights by hurting you, damaging you, Yana? knocking you out. Yeah. Yeah, she's that's, slow, dude. That's not her game. Yeah, she doesn't have power, yeah. And, and Holly Holm, like, that's how you're going to beat Holly Holm. I have to choose Holly Holm by decision. I think a 30 to 27 is the only right choice to make here. Yeah. Again, it's women's MMA and shit could go crazy. I just cannot imagine a world where Yana Santos, off of two years off and having a child in yeah, that man. time, can beat Holly Holm. I will say she did look improved in her last couple fights. She looked like yeah. having her man be Tiago Santos is yeah. going to benefit. Sure. Um. By the way, were you done? With your yeah, your yeah. Fight? Holly Holm. Yeah, I think it's straightforward, man. I the preacher's agree. daughter. I, I agree with you. Thirty twenty-seven. Holly Holm is forty-one, which is you know not great. Um, eighteen-time world boxing champion in three separate weight classes. We know what she wants to do. She also has decent clinch work, but she wants to box, right? Mm -hmm. Now she certainly has not looked like herself when she was you know knocking out Ronda Rousey and such. Sure. But you know. Is there the possibility that at 41 years old, she's officially done and this is it for Holly Holm? Of course. But I just don't see, like, you, bro, you, you see the eye test, right? Mm -hmm. Yana does not pass that eye test of, like, she's going to put you out or yeah. put something dangerous on Holly Holm. I agree with you. 30-27 Holly Holm on this one. And she's a, it's minus 210, which isn't that crazy either. No, I would like, put it. I, would put it I say don't bet women's MMA. We say that all the time. but And, and maybe don't, but like. But I, I like that. Yeah, I like that. That's a good part. There, there's the degenerate else. coming out of us. Yeah. <laughs> like, we just want to get burned. Yeah. At this point, Yana's going to choke her out in like 40 seconds. No chance. Yeah, dude. I don't think Not so. Not in a three-rounder. Now, Tiago Santos versus Holly Holm? <laughs> I'm taking also, Tiago. Yeah. And By also, decision. No, I'm joking. Holly Holm is a huge John Jones like fan slash partner. Yeah. So maybe he like inspired her type thing. What if they did a tag team fight? Like intramural intramural? Intramural. And just like Is that the term? Co ed? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like that. Who would they I, fight? Who would you want to see them two fight? No, no, it would be Holly Holm and John Jones versus, versus the Santos family. Oh, they, they, come on. I'm just saying. I hate that. That's a bar that's like a they're getting messed up. Anyway, <laughs> main event of the night. Main event. And what an exciting fight this really is. This is a very good fight. Very capping good. off a decent card. Decent, you know. Decent. But it's, it's, it, after the last two that we had, it's been... Yeah. You know, but it's high stakes in this main high event. High stakes. You know, top five. Are they both yep. top five? At this yes, point? Yeah, I Top five so. guys in, uh, feather, uh, in bantamweight. Um, it's obviously Marlon Chito Vera versus Corey Sandhagen. This is, you know, a really tough fight, man. Um, Chito is on an incredible win streak right now. Chito. He is a very brutal fighter. Mm -hmm. he, he is very brutal, man. He's got, like, what Dalidze has, he has that. Yeah, he's mean. Where he's mean, he's going out to hurt you, he's going to bust you open. Even on his back, brutal elbows. He's cut open multiple people from, from, the, from bottom guard. Um, very high-level fighter, very well-rounded. You know, he's got a, a win over current number one contender, Sean O'Malley, as we've talked about. Um, he's just a brutal fighter, man. He's going to hurt you. He's going to hurt you bad. He can be a slow starter at times. Sure. I rewatched his Cruz fight. I rewatched his last few fights, all of them. But versus Cruz, I thought he was losing. Yeah. If we're, if we're, now, he did more damage, I think. Sure. But if we're doing, like, how UFC is supposed to be scored round by round, I thought Dominic Cruz was definitely winning Yeah. going into that. Clearly, um, to me. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And even against um, Frankie Edgar, yep. he was losing that too. I agree. And then both times, he brutally knocked him out. A fun fact it, to me is that, in fact, four of his last five finishes have come later than the midway point of the fight. Yeah. He's so, a slow starter. He's a slow starter, but he'll hold his own, but he's he's... he's he puts on damage when he decides to do it, man. And yep. he, he goes hard. Now, 
On the other side, we have Corey Sandhagen. Quite frankly, I just think Corey Sandhagen's a little bit better. Yeah. I just think he, while Cheeto puts the damage on people over cumulative damage over a number of rounds and then knocks them out, I think Corey Sandhagen just puts these people out. You know. Yeah. And his, of course, Sandhagen has some losses recently. They're against really high level fighters. Peter right? Yan and yeah, Potential Aljo. Goats of the of the division, right? Mm-hmm. So, for me, I think the biggest difference is actually power. I think Sandhagen has slept people in the first round. I think he has more power. I think he's actually better on the ground, too. Um, I'm going to go with Sandhagen, man. I'm going to go with Sandhagen by decision. Yeah. But it's really tough. It's really tough. I could absolutely see Cheeto catching him with something and knocking him out. I just think Sandhagen is... Like, okay, the, the amount of strikes that he's taken from Dominic Cruz, the amount of strikes that he's taken from Frankie Edgar, if he can, like, if he's just, like, waiting to take those strikes those from, from Sandhagen, Sandhagen, yeah, it's not a good recipe. And he's going to mix it up, man. Like, he's right. going to hurt you. So, I just, I just, I don't see him winning a decision. I could see him not going to, I don't see it, though. I'm going to go Sandhagen by decision. Yeah. Right. So, you, you said a lot of what I wanted to say in terms of, like, Cheeto Vera's been on an absolute tear. You can't take anything away from him. The last three fights have been, like, I hate to say fluky, but it's like, dude, you're losing, and then you catch a guy. Yeah. Like, good on you. That's a phenomenal thing to do, and you yeah. won the fight fair and I square. I will say, like, versus Cruz, like, he looked for that front kick several times. Yeah, he was, he was hunting it. Yeah. And then you had, like, Frankie Edgar fight. He was clearly losing that yeah, fight. I don't think them. he was looking for that. It happened. Nope. And then even in the Rob Font fight, if Rob Font wasn't throwing pillow hands, pillow hands, dude. Cheeto Vera would have been Why was he so out of that fight. In that? I don't know, man. I just think that Corey Sandhagen doesn't throw soft like Rob Font. No, I think Corey Sandhagen isn't a hundred years old like Frankie Edgar and right, yeah, the D, you know Dominic Cruz. Respect to them, and I love those guys. Division, yeah. yeah, both guys that and still put that on I love. great performances. But I, this is like a big step up, right? I think I think and, Sandhagen. I'm sorry, if he but, does win this though, right? Agreed. He's in the conversation. I think time. Sandhagen should win, but that's been the case the last few times Cheeto Vera's been out there. Yep. The guys are beating him. They should win, and then they don't. Right? I think if Sandhagen can get a takedown or two, that would go a long way to helping him win this fight. I think he will because he is better on the ground. He would win easily if that's the case. If he can't, he could end up asleep. That's a possibility yeah. with Marlon Cheeto Vera. So we could see the same shit that we've been seeing out of him the last few times. Anyways, though, this fight scares me. I went back and forward on it a couple times, but I did end up taking Corey Sandhagen here by decision. I have to imagine that Marlon Vera's luck runs out when he gets to this high yeah. of a is caliber. Luck, is, That's what guess, I'm saying. I guess we'll find out. I, I don't we'll want to and I don't want to sound like that guy. I'm sorry. He's not lucky, but it's like like I don't think a knockout is lucky or fluky, but no. it's like you've been losing all the fights. Until you're not. And it's like, how many times can you do that? That's not a recipe for success yeah. in MMA. Especially yeah. at the top level. Plus, you can't wipe your ass before you shit. Can't wipe your ass before you shit. <laughs> and that's basically what he's doing by losing those early rounds, right? Yep. Similar to the Peter Jan Marab situation. A guy that drops rounds early. I think if he drops rounds two and, you know, one, two, three to Sandhagen. Yep. I think Sandhagen probably just stays safe and he's yeah. able to survive. By the way, if Corey Sandhagen does win... Five in a row. Main events for me. Yeah. I'm on, I'm on a streak, so yeah. help me out, Sam. Yeah. By the way, people tell me I've changed, I've changed. I shit my pants. I had to change. Fair. So. Did you wipe your ass before or after? You already know. Shit. So, but anyway, nonetheless, this is going to be a hugely exciting fight. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's for sure. So. Yeah, it's going to be great. Interesting little card. And then we have next week off. We'll find so something to let do. Let them know what they should do in the meantime. Oh, that's a that's a great idea. Yeah. In the meantime, you should talk to us a little bit on the 107 MMA on Instagram. And you could follow us here on YouTube. Click the little subscribe button. Ring the bell. We're gonna bring out a whole bunch of content for you guys, even in this week off. We're gonna be thinking of you, so you should think of us. Absolutely. How's that? Absolutely. It's good. Thanks, guys. Peace. We good? Peace.